The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets in positive territory. You got the S&Ps right now over 4,800. We were as high as 4,807 overnight. Right now, you're up 15 points in the S&Ps, trading up a third of percent, trading at 4,801. NASDAQ 100 up about Two tenths percent trading at 16,513. We already had an Apple with some volatility to the upside. Apple going to open just near that three trillion dollar mark after hitting that mark just yesterday. You get the Dow up four tenths percent right now, up to a high of 36,619 overnight. I mean, look at where we were just yesterday 36,150. You're talking about 450 points above that price level. Russell up by nine points, trading at 22.78, just near the highs we had yesterday. Talk about some volatility on the Russell yesterday. Bitcoin up $1,000, trading just under 47,000. You got crude up 46 cents. Volatility continuing yesterday down to 74.27. We're back at 76.52. We were just above 77 though. Look at that at 8.50 this morning, 10 minutes ago. Gold catching a bit at 1807 this morning. You're up seven dollars in the gold contract. You got silver up 13 cents. Silver catching a bit just really since about 8 a.m. as well. And notes and bonds, it continues. We got lower price and higher yield. You're talking about a yield right now. We'll pull it up to be exact, but I think you're pushing 1.64, 1.66, something like that on the tenure. We'll pull it up in a moment. Nonetheless, quite a lower price to start the year. You back it up to Friday. Okay, folks, and you're trading at one. What is the high middle of the day Friday? About 130.18. You've given up a full point and 11 ticks in the tenure by Tuesday morning of trading. We still have 22 minutes to go until the opening bell. Let's jump over to Apple. Quite a day yesterday for Apple, and it's looking to be quite a day again today. We were up to 183.38. Apple yesterday, 182.86, I believe, was the number. We got there and then got over that number to 182.88. We're going to open right near that number at about 182.70, got up to 183.38. You look at Apple's action yesterday, basically from about 178 to 183. You had $5 of price action. You got 14 billion shares outstanding. That's a $70 billion market cap swing in the span of about five hours. We didn't even have a $1 trillion company until late 2018, I believe. The acceleration from that time to $3 trillion, pretty remarkable. We get it January 3rd of 2022. So we almost get it in 2021. The world had never seen a $1 trillion company until the end of 2018. Meanwhile, Apple nowadays swings 50 to $70 billion in market cap like it's nothing. Three years ago, we had never seen a $1 trillion company. 70 trillion 70 billion dollars just the size of apple pretty amazing we'll see how we open today jumping over to some of the other companies a little bit of divergence yesterday we have the chart of apple up you see how it accelerates higher were they selling microsoft to buy apple early yesterday because quite the dive from microsoft shares to kick off the day at the same time as you had apple accelerating higher you had microsoft selling from 337 down to 329 it rebounded nicely uh we there the the moves yesterday pretty substantial across the board and some different ones you had salesforce we have some salesforce in my newsletter rocket equities and options same type of action as Microsoft. Claws back all the losses, though, yesterday. But, man, you talk about some moves. Salesforce trade down almost $7 from $255 to $248.65. You claw it back. Some of the airlines had big days yesterday. They're going to open a little bit higher again today. American, yesterday, trades from almost $18 to 1918 You see the action overnight. American going to open higher as well. Delta Airlines trading higher as well. Boeing on the heels of some orders and the travel industry trading higher going to open about $3 higher as well for Boeing shares. Uh, Uber got a pop yesterday with the travel. We have some Uber in my newsletter. Uber up about 5 to $0.15 cents overnight uh, to about 44 bucks. Let's see, even Airbnb. Yeah, Airbnb had a move yesterday as well with the travel stocks. You're going to open higher again. 
to 174. The banks, J.P. Morgan, again, you thought they had a pop yesterday. The pop continues. J.P. Morgan's going to open about two dollars higher from the close just yesterday to 163.46. And uh, as we do that, pulling it up, let's take a look at the exact yield on the 10-year because man, it is rocking 1.67 percent right now. I think we're sitting at about 1.5 percent coming into the new year, just like that. 17 basis points. The market's going to price in a quarter point in the 10-year within the span of a few trading days to kick off the calendar year right now. There's J.P. Morgan's action. We jump over to Bank of America. Bank of America trading up almost a full dollar from 46.18 to 46.90. Wells Fargo had some good action yesterday. They got an upgrade yesterday on top of the higher yields. They're going to open higher as well. Yeah, some big action across the board there with those banks. All right, let's jump to Tesla. Mr. Elon Musk, he had quite a day yesterday, as that company did. You're going to open basically unchanged. You were up to 12.10 overnight. Simply amazing. The story continues. How quickly this company got basically it all back. I mean, yeah, you got $43 at the top here. But, man, you're talking about pushing all-time highs at 1200 And we were just trading, folks, at 886 that's almost a 50% acceleration in this stock. We trade up 40 more dollars from here. We hit all-time highs, and you're talking about a 50% return on Tesla shares in, what is that, three, six, nine, ten 10 trading days? If you're trading Tesla on margin and you're buying it at the 880 area, you're making double your money, as in because it's a 50% return. Just remarkable. Uh, not many would have said that you would have been at all-time highs by potentially January 4th when this stock was trading at $800 and change back on December 21st. But Elon does it again. They had the big day yesterday with deliveries, record deliveries. Uh, and, man, his day. Pulling up the article. I have it somewhere here. How about $30 billion? Elon Musk's fortune climbs $30 billion. He's now in the $300 billion tier, I believe. Uh, he was as high as $340 earlier last year at that all-time high for Tesla. $33.8 billion just yesterday. Quite a first trading day for the year for the richest man in the world. $304.2 billion. Bezos, talk about getting lapped. Bezos, $196. Uh, Tesla was up 13.5% yesterday. Just an amazing one for the fourth quarter. Uh, he owns 18% of the company. Quite a number when you think about what that company is worth. Uh, and yeah, he sold 10% of the company and you're going to be pushing all-time highs for that. He was at 340 last year uh, when Tesla was peaking out at the highs. But man, give it some time. You might see those highs today the way the Tesla was moving just yesterday. You look at it. I mean, you're talking about 100 and. $30 almost price action yesterday, and you're going to open within about 43 bucks of all-time highs for Tesla. We jump over to Google shares, completing the FANG uh, look around. Google just chopping around 2900 You could say where it's been for the better part of four or five months. August 31st, you hit this area, and we've been chopping between 2800 maybe 3000 there or about on Google shares. We jump over to Facebook. Been talking a lot about meta shares. Facebook. Chopping around as well, sitting about 338, going to open barely positive today with the market. All right, folks, stay tuned. I'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network Fast Market. We got the S&Ps up 17 points right now. We got the NASDAQ up 32, Dow up 171. And we start getting some uh, economic data tomorrow. We get Fed minutes tomorrow for the December meeting. We get ADP private payrolls tomorrow ahead of Friday's non-farm payroll number. So we get some action this week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 16 points right now. You got the Dow up 167, NASDAQ 100 up 28 points. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, talking about the day's action in the market, talking about defined risk, option trades, hypothetical setups. Kevin Hinks, Happy New Year, man. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Happy New Year to you and your listeners. Yep, we're off to a great start so far. Um, you know, the, a lot of green across the board these last few days. Not really a leaping trade, but kind of more of a creeping trade higher. It, they're, they're not flying, but they're certainly solid gains to start the year, even in the uh, throes of some creeping higher interest rates, Tommy. But, you know, this is a pretty interesting level for the 10-year yield. If you look at a one-year chart of the 10-year yield, Tommy, you can go back to May 12th. Hit 169. May 19th, 1.69. October 22nd, 169. Uh, November 24th, 169. So we've got some pretty interesting levels that we're tapping up against here as we get up towards 167. So I expect uh, notes to be pretty interesting here. We're getting into a, an interesting level. So uh, we'll see how it plays out in the next hours and days, Tommy. Yeah, I almost had to do a double check yesterday, Kevin, when I saw the action on the tenure. I said, that say it's down almost a full point? Sure enough, it was. The run continues today, down about eight ticks. We're pushing, like you said, um, the high 1.68% yield on the tenure. Quite a resilient market. And how about Apple, Kevin? I was talking about in the beginning of the program, we didn't even see a trillion dollar company in the market in the world until late 2018. The acceleration Apple's had, they hit three trillion yesterday. They're going to open right near that mark uh, today. They were over the mark last night, but the price action, Kevin, we had almost five or six dollars of price action in Apple yesterday. You got, what is it, 14 or 16 billion shares outstanding. The company is moving 70 to 90 to 50 billion dollars market cap wise a day, but pretty remarkable the run that it's had, the acceleration with these tech stocks, three trillion dollars for one company like Apple. You know, it's interesting. We, we, we were talking about how higher interest rates could be affecting growth stocks and some of the IT sector names. You know, they were a little weak, even though the market was up. And then we'll, you move over to Apple. And really, the, the, the discussion is starting to be now. Apple's its own economy. 
<laughs> right? Apple's yeah. bigger than the economy of several major countries itself. So I think when we look at Apple now, I'm not sure we can connect the dots to any part of the economy. I think we should really start looking at Apple as its own economy, Tommy. Yeah, because you had some sell-offs, man. At the same time that Apple was uh, accelerating higher, maybe they were selling Microsoft. I was half kidding, but Microsoft was tanking yesterday morning, got most of it back. You had Salesforce tanking yesterday morning. Some yep. of those growth companies are special, but Apple, uh, its own animal in some way, man, for sure. So, Kevin, we got uh, we kick right into the year with positive prices, and we kick in with some economic news ahead of earnings tomorrow. We'll get some Fed minutes. We get some ADP private payrolls, and then we get non-farm payrolls on Friday. What are you looking for this week, this market, ahead of that payrolls number as we come into the first week of 2022? You know, the questions looming over this week, Tommy, is has the Om Omicron variant affected non-farm payrolls? Right, the numbers are looking for about four hundred and fifteen thousand for the ADP, and about four hundred thousand for non-farm payrolls, and about a four point one percent unemployment rate. But what has the Omicron done to that number? Remember, last month's number was a pretty big disappointment, around two hundred thousand. So we'll, we'll see what we get from this. I think there's a lot of uncertainty going into this number. Uh, so I think that. The markets will get jittery and nervous as we get later in the week, Tommy. It seems like there's always some theme, Kevin, in terms of when we come in, whether it was the Delta variant, uh, whether it was the um, extra unemployment benefits, it was the end of the summer, right, coming back to school. There's always factors weighing on these numbers, man. Um, and we'll see how long the market can kind of deal if we do get a miss, because I imagine it's at least possible, Kevin, when you think about people being out of work, people just... Uh, changing maybe their daily habits as opposed to if we weren't dealing with the the rising cases definitely possible for friday so with Tommy, that in you mind Kevin, I found, it's always something it's, right that's it that's it's it you know it really is and so at some point the they got to get the jobs going no matter what at some point because it is always going right. to be something and the moment we get over this you know we're still getting over inflation of course all of that going on as you know uh the airlines. How about the airlines real quick, Kevin? You know, we're dealing with just, man, quite a holiday season for those airlines. But it looks like almost a max pain situation. Even the cruise ships, to some degree, they come out with kind of a warning against the cruise ships. We haven't talked to you um, in a while, man, going over the holidays. So pretty remarkable that maybe we're seeing kind of a max pain situation, man, because those airlines really popping yesterday. Interesting with thousands of cancellations over the holiday weekend. Yeah, I think, and we talked about this a lot yesterday, I think with all the news that have come out about cancellations and shortages and all the problems, there were still 2 million people went through TSA on Sunday. Now, how can that be if everything is so bad and maybe this trading community decided, well, this might be as bad as it gets. And if Omicron is this short-lived, more contagious but less dangerous variant, Maybe we are at the end of the rope and or end of the road here, or in the late innings of this of this uh, COVID. And I think people started buying some dips. Remember, these airlines are beat up from from Oof, their yeah. eyes, Tommy. So I think people started to bring uncertainty, becoming less uncertain. So I mean, I think, cruise yeah, ships. I mean, the powerful day in the airlines yesterday. And cruise ships, they have not had that powerful day, man. They're in their own world as well. Um, but that said a lot as well in terms of just a max pain. You know, even with that type of an order, in any other world, Kevin, the government comes out and says, you know, for your own best bet, for your health, for the health of everybody, don't go on a cruise ship. My goodness, could you imagine what happened with those stocks? But we all know that in, in that certain context. Um, so anyway, a as we go. With that in mind, yeah. man, what are you guys talking about on the program Fast Market coming up at noon today, Kevin? Look, like Folio going to do a presentation on alcohol, alcohol and non-alcohol. So we're going to do a lot of work. Whenever that they come with that theme, we always try to pivot off that and, and do a lot of work. So a lot of we're, we're going to get into the sin business today, Tom. And then we'll look <laughs> wow. at, of course, we'll try to look at some airlines and maybe look at Disney and see how that stock has done over the holidays. Remember, when you travel, what do you do, Tommy? Right? You get on a plane, you go to a resort, and you have a drink. We'll cover all those today on Fast Market.
They're going to hit it all, folks. You heard it. January 4th, we're kicking off the new year in style on Fast Market, coming up at noon Eastern time today. Kevin, man, great to talk to you. I appreciate the update, and we'll be uh, listening, watching at noon Eastern time today, man. Have a great day, Tommy. Happy New Year to the O'Brien family. Happy New Year to the Hanks family as well, man. Take care. Folks, tune in today, 12 noon Eastern time. You heard it. They got everything going on that you need for that vacation, including saddling up at the bar for a little cocktail once you arrive at your vacation destination. Uh, Disney, one of my favorite stocks. But, man, talk about an underperformer last year. But starting the year off okay, and you're getting a pop today since they're going to be talking about it. There's your 15-minute action. It's interesting what's going on here in these travel stocks because I think the market has made up a decision that, as Kevin was talking about, people are traveling regardless of the curbs put in place. I don't imagine there's going to be massive shutdowns to any degree, assuming we fast forward in terms of the status quo from here on out. The case is pretty remarkable, the rising caseload. Um, but two million travelers, vacation, travel, you see Disney popping more than $2. We'll talk a little bit about them. Why not when we get back? Because uh, 2021 ended the year with their first billion dollar movie to end that year. Maybe a good sign to come for 2022. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps up 15 points right now. A little bit of maybe a sell-off, you could say, on the open there. Down to 47.99. We'll call it 4,800. NASDAQ 100 up 14 points. Let's jump over to Apple, see how they're opening. And you're going to post uh, not quite 
Not quite. Did we get there? I think we got another print. Yes, we did a $3 trillion valuation today. Short-lived as we trade a little bit lower. Uh, Dow, though, catching a bit. How about that? Dow, 36,641. Is that an all-time high? Yes, it is. We're trading right at all-time highs in the Dow right now. NASDAQ 100, you're about 260 points off that price level. S&Ps, you're basically within ticks of that price level. And the Russell, Russell's got some work to do, about 180 points away from all-time highs. Jumping back to Disney real quick. Disney, Opening up 1.3% again today, getting a little bit of a pop, uh, up to 158.84. Now, as I was mentioning, uh, Disney, there is the article from December 26. So they closed out 2021 with the first billion dollar movie, Spider-Man. Uh, who are the two actors in here? Benedict Cumberbatch, I believe, and uh, Tom Holland, I believe, maybe. Nonetheless, first billion dollar movie that they've had since 2019, I believe. Let's slide down here. Um, it's a cross promotion between Sony and Disney. Yes, Tom Holland. No, that's No Way Home. There it is. Matrix Resurrections. Yeah, I plan on watching that one on HBO. If you have HBO Max, HBO Resurrections. Um, Nonetheless, so $1 billion mark for the first time, only uh, film to do that in 2021. But you can see things changing coming into 2022, hopefully for the better. We got to get over this hump, though. Pretty remarkable. Yesterday, 1 million plus cases in the country. Just staggering numbers, to say the least. Okay, jumping around to what else we had going on. What did I have up here that I wanted to talk about? Yeah, what about this snow going on near D.C. and Virginia, man? I was watching some videos of the morning shows today, up early this morning. People stranded basically stranded in their cars on highways overnight for 10 to 12 hours trapped in their cars during a snowstorm um, outside of dc biggest snowstorm to hit dc in years block some of the east coast main thoroughfares overnight ice for tuesday crews were working to unblock the i-95 south i mean i-95 of the u.s capital but it remained unclear when traffic would resume um NBC correspondent Josh Letterman tweeted he was stuck in 95, I-95 for more than seven hours. As somebody with an infant child, folks, under the age of one in the house, that is some scary stuff. Uh, and you're dealing with temperatures of about 26 degrees on a road like I-95. You're not talking about a road in the middle of nowhere. Seems like they should be able to do that a little bit better and not have that happen. But, man, when you deal with those snowstorms like they have, it's only so much that they can do sometimes. But nonetheless, a scary deal. Hopefully everybody gets out okay this morning. That happened in last night that they were stuck. Last night, just stuck there the whole night. Okay, what else do I got pulled up here? How about J.P. Morgan? They're pumping it. J.P. Morgan strategist says, global stock market party, far from over, positive catalyst, not exhausted for equities. Uh, bull market to continue in Europe. Stay bullish. Positive catalysts are not exhausted. Strategists led by, not familiar, Mislav Metechka wrote in a note to clients Tuesday, downside risks, including a hawkish turn by the central banks, a slowdown in China's economy, or more significant coronavirus restrictions will either fail to materialize or are already priced into stocks. This is an important one to try and wrap your brain around because you figure out this one, you figure out how the markets reacted to this, whether it's already priced in or not. That would be a significant advantage over the market. The positive outlook comes as benchmark indi index indexes in both the U.S. and Europe trade at record highs following last year's ferocious rally on the back of unprecedented fiscal stimulus. So here's what to take note of here, right? Uh, hawkish turn by central banks. Well, the market already really knows that it's coming. Three rate hikes this year, three rate hikes next year. That's probably part of the reason why you have yields rising to start off the year. It's at least a factor in that market, to say the least. China's economy, always a variable you're going to have to deal with. Uh, the one that I'll focus on that we've already talked about, though, more significant coronavirus restrictions. Listen, over in Europe, it's definitely possible. You've seen the restrictions that go on over there versus in the U.S. And I think the cruise ships example is a great example. I don't imagine there will be shutdowns at this point. We're all very aware of the risk. Now, if hospitals start filling up, folks, even as investors, I'm not talking politics or COVID, that's the thing to watch because no politician can deny full hospitals. If somehow this hits so many people that even if it's less 
harmful, as in, you know, even if less people per whatever it is, 100,000 end up in the hospital, it's hitting so many people, it has the ability in certain areas at least to overwhelm hospitals, that's when you could see something. As it looks right now, even with the rapid spiking numbers, it doesn't seem like that's gonna be the case, but we just hit a million cases. And man, those numbers, I don't even think they're foreseen anywhere in the world when you're talking about a million cases a day. Even at a less harmful strain, it has the ability to do that. But I don't imagine it's gonna happen because look what happened in cruise ships, okay? They're not gonna shut down the cruise ships anymore, okay? Because they have a right to operate even if they're a cesspool of COVID going on right now to some degree, okay? As long as hospitals aren't over full, as long as it's not a threat to public health, which probably two, two and a half years into the pandemic, it's not, they're going to be allowed to exist. And even a directive from the government that says, basically, if you read through the lines, you're crazy to go on a COVID on a cruise ship because they're probably all full of COVID right now. But the market knows that and it's already priced in. And that's kind of what JP Morgan is saying, at least on that front, that positive catalysts are not exact, exhausted and downside risks so you're talking about downside risks being a, fled, a Fed, an economic slowdown, or more significant coronary restrictions will either fail to materialize or already priced into stocks. The one thing I add to that that is definitely a negative side risk is that you have supply chain issues persisting. Where is that in that? You have wage issues persisting. persisting. You have inflation issues persisting. And you have companies not able to keep up on margins to the ability to make the profits they're used to while they're navigating a time of inflation, while they're navigating a time of tough supply chain issues, including just capital, human capital, in terms of hiring human capital. Um, having a discussion with a lot of great friends and they fall on both sides of the spectrum of the aisle talking about uh, the weight on the private businesses to deal with the vaccine mandate. You're talking about companies that are over, I believe it is 50 people that need to either have a vaccine mandate or to test. Uh, that could cause some few problems in those companies. You're seeing it being implemented. And the problem that they're talking about is that if they let people go because of this, okay, and the onus is going to be on them, in this specific environment, it's very tough to get good employees back. Right. If you lose somebody because maybe that person is making a stand, which I feel is for a wrong decision. But guess what? They have the right to folks. All right. That's the deal. You don't have to get vaccinated. But if a company and and <laughs> I don't even want to get into it, because it's gonna, uh, if a company wanted to do that, it seems like that's their right. The fact the government's still and all the companies to do it is definitely what's in question. Uh, but they become the police to a certain degree. And unfortunately, some people are gonna leave and it's gonna to be tough to replace those workers in this environment. That's a risk as well that aren't in there. Inflation, supply chain issues, that's the risk. And margins to profits would be a risk that I would be looking at. But shutdowns to the economy, I don't see that happening to any degree. Look at Carnival. You're up 3.4% again today for these cruise ships after we get a directive from our own government saying stay away. That says a lot. Uh, in terms of where we are in society right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Pedro White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now up 20 points. We hit a new all-time high. You hit 48.08 on the futures. You have the NASDAQ 100 pulling back, though, a bit, jumping around to some of the biggest stocks out there. We started off with Apple. Going to be flat on the day. You see the acceleration, though. We gave up about a dollar right there on the open from 183 to 182. We jump over to Microsoft shares. MSFT is their symbol. Microsoft lower on the day by four-tenths percent. We jump to Google shares, higher by three-tenths percent. Meta. Higher by a full percent, up to 341. For Facebook shares, we jumped to Amazon, up about two tenths percent. Quite a day for Amazon yesterday. I think Amazon was up almost two percent yesterday. Jumping around to some of the stocks with action. Foot Locker gets a downgrade today. They're down 3.6 percent right now. Jumping over to some of those other headlines. So the downgrade, uh, JP Morgan downgraded Foot Locker to underweight from neutral cost pressures. How about that? Cost pressures, like I was just talking about, and tougher competition. On the flip side, Under Armour trading higher after the Baird upgrade to outperform from neutral. Athletic apparel maker stock would benefit from a cyclical recovery in earnings. UAA, Under Armour, up 2.7% on that pop. Let's see, Warner Mo Media. Um, they have some action out there. You talk about Apple. Yeah, Ford. So they're going to start accepting purchase orders this week for the F-150 Lightning electric vehicle pickup truck. It had previously shut down the reservation system for the truck due to an overwhelming response. I think it's only 100 bucks you got to put down to reserve one of these things. But, man, the market loves that. You're up 5.5%. Check out the run that Ford has had. Look at that run. You were back in September at 12. You're trading at 22, let alone back in May at 11. 100% return from May and almost at that price level when you talk about where you were just in September Ford. Just the last two days, you're talking about popping from $20.50 to $23 on Ford. Seems like that electric $150 going to be a good seller. Coca-Cola, they were higher in the pre-market. Guggenheim upgrades them to a buy from neutral. Coca-Cola setting a number of factors, strong emerging market performance, faster than expected recovery in on premises sales faster than expected so people eating out on premises is talking about when they're drinking on premises at a restaurant etc coca-cola ko up 1.5 percent today is that good i think that okay, might be an all-time high is that all-time highs for coca-cola as we speak up 1.5 percent today let's see what else we got hewlett packer gets uh, an upgrade as well hpe Got upgrades across the board to kick off 2022. There's a pop for you, up 3.8%. Toyota, they're going to launch its own automotive operating system, according to a report by Japan's Nikkei News Service. They're going to be able to handle advanced operations such as autonomous driving. 
Uh, Toyota, the market likes that, huh? Autonomous driving. There's a pop for you, up 4.4% as they're going to launch their own operative, uh, excuse me, automotive operating system. GE's higher. They get an upgrade. What's going on? We got upgrade central across the board here. Uh, let's see how GE is trading. Up 2.4% on the open. We got higher markets, folks. Uh, outperform from neutral at Credit Suisse. Price target of 122. It's trading right now at 98.53. BlackBerry gets ruled against uh, a bit to have more than an eight-year-old investor lawsuit thrown out. And, uh, yeah, we're not familiar with that one either way. All right. What else I have it pulled up here? Yeah, Elizabeth Holmes. How about this one? They go to trial. She gets guilty. She can do 20 years. Uh, they're saying she'll probably do a lot less than that. Hopefully she does some serious time. Uh, she's only 37. Remarkable that uh, the rise and fall and fraud that she escalated on many very successful people and corporations uh, over her time. So she gets guilty on four of 11 cases, excuse me, that she had up there. Uh, maximum of 20 years in prison, although she'll probably get far less than that. She'll likely appeal that conviction, of course, as that goes as well. All right, what did I have up here? Is this the one? No. All right. Ah, too bad. I got to find it at the break. Yes, here we go. So this is back in November, but it's pretty cool. And I wanted to just bring it up again, talking about risk-free adjusted. So a Series 1 savings bond, okay? Series 1 U.S. government savings bond. I know a lot about finance. This kind of blew me away in November when I heard it because of the type of inflation we're getting right now. You can earn 7.12% risk-free on your savings, okay? If you head on over to Treasury Direct, which is where you get the treasuries, there is your current rate. Four, we're talking about a savings one savings bond, 7.12% for bonds issued November 2021 to April 2022. And what this is talking about is that you can get 7.12%. Folks, if you have cash laying around that you don't need for a year, it's not that bad of a deal. And, and if you might not need it for longer, it's potentially even a greater deal. And if per inflation persists, it's a much better deal than sitting on cash. 7.12%. Uh, so this is November. That's the new rate for Searings 1 savings bonds bought from the U.S. Treasury now through April 2022. Second highest ever offered. Rising inflation responsible for the eye-popping headline rate. It's double almost what they're at previously. The interest rate on the Series 1 bond is sent twice a year based on recent changes to the CPI for all urban consumers. So November's pricing is based from the change from March to September. The rapid surge in inflation means you'll get double the six-month-ago rate of 3.54. The way this thing works, okay, is that the interest rate is guaranteed for the first six months. After that, it will rise or fall depending on inflation. You have to hold on to your investment for at least a year. There's the big caveat, okay? And if you exit before five years, you'll lose three months of interest. So at earliest, you can exit one year and one day, let's just say, okay? And you'll get 7.12%. You'll have to give back one quarter of your earnings, okay? You'll still get more than 5% for the year. Right? You're getting 7.12%. Now, this can change on the next six months, right? Because this is set every six months. And it probably is going to change, okay? Uh, as in, it's probably not going to be at 7% for that long. But guess what? It could be. There's no reason to think inflation couldn't be on the rise for a while. Um, and you can keep these, I believe that, and if you exit before five years, yeah. So after five years, there's no penalty at all. It's tied for it. It's a pretty cool deal considering the interest rate and not a lot of people with cash right now sitting in their accounts that they might not use for a year are probably aware that they can get that type of return. I mean, if you're sitting on any cash for a year right now, folks, that is a tough one. Can you buy them um, for a minor? I think you might be able to. They're savings bonds. I don't see why not. And just search out Treasury Direct. I believe that's where you get all those savings bonds. Uh, Treasury Direct. You buy it literally right from the Treasury. And Series 1 savings bond is what to check out there. But, you know, I, I, I saw that headline again this morning. And I said, I'm going to talk about that again because that blew me away. And uh, second highest ever. It doesn't happen very often, folks. The inflation we're dealing with. I, 
guaranteed rate. Pretty cool. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps up 16. NASDAQ, a little bit of negative action down 30. Dow off 220, uh, excuse me, up 226. Look at that reversal. We got the Dow leading and the NASDAQ in negative territory. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back right after the break. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dodge, the Dodge, the Dow charging higher. 36,713. First time I've ever said 36,700 for the Dow. We're talking about within reach of 37,000 of the Dow. Just like that, you got the S&Ps up 18 points. Tech stocks pulling back a bit, though. You got Apple shares flat right now. You got Tesla shares down about six tenths percent. We jump over to Microsoft, down about half a percent right now. Google shares up eight tenths percent. We jump to the chip sector. AMD, after quite a day to the upside yesterday, down about three tenths percent. We jump over to Intel shares charging higher 
up 1.3 percent. We jump over to some of the at-home stocks. Uh, quite the slide here. Zoom down 3.5 percent right back to the lows that we had yesterday. DocuSign, a different story, um, but another slide. Not quite at the lows, but man, these two companies, really interesting in terms of uh, a reopening trade going on in light of what's happening. We got a million cases of COVID. We got planes shut down everywhere last week, and the market is forward-looking, folks. Uh, you see it every time. Uh, hopefully, this is a good sign for everybody in the economy because, man, they are really going gangbusters for the reopening. Delta's up 1.6. United right now up 2.3. We jump over to the cruises. Carnival's up 2.5. We jump over to Norwegian, up another 1.2 after the run yesterday. You know what's not up? Cannabis. Cannabis. Can uh, cannabis growth down 3.7%. Giving back the gains these stocks that you had yesterday. I keep them on my radar because eventually, maybe, but just, man, not yet. I am not buying it even at 9 bucks, even below the lows we had of 2020 for cannabis growth. The market, though, sitting within three points of all-time highs in the S&P, sitting at all-time highs in the Dow right now, sitting about 300 points away in the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell up 12 points as well. Crude. Check out crude up a buck fifty three as we come into the end of the program, man. Watch out. Seventy seven fifty nine. We talk to our man Teddy Kegstat tomorrow at forty past the hour. We'll be talking some crude. We'll be talking some forex. Thanks so much for tuning in. Starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up live with the Tiger Technicians Hour. We got Larry Pesavento with Trade What You See at eleven. Fast Market with our man Kevin Hinks at noon. Steve Rhodes at one o'clock and Tom O'Brien. My dad wraps it up live from three till four. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.